The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. I'm Jim Hutchinson with the New Jersey Delaware Bay edition of the Fisherman Magazine. It's Thursday, June 15th, and we're less than a week away from that summer solstice, June 21st. That is the first official day of summer of 2023. By the way, to my very best friend in the world, happy Father's Day, Jim Hutchinson Sr., and happy Father's Day to all of you fathers and sons and daughters and everybody. This is a perfect weekend to enjoy that family time together. And of course, we are, uh, as we hit summer, that means that fluke or summer flounder, as well as tuna, they will become our lead headlines for the next few weeks here in the New Jersey, Delaware region forecasts. We did get our very first official doormat fluke report of the 2023 season in our weekly reports that we do every week over at thefisherman.com. Every Monday afternoon, go to thefisherman.com and check out our latest reports. But it would appear that angler Tim Foley became the very first to hit the 10 pound mark here at the Jersey Shore. That was last Tuesday. It turns out about aboard the Sea Tiger 2, Captain Hal out of Atlantic Highlands. Now 10 pounds for me is that threshold for doormat status. If it's 9.5, it's not a doormat. Maybe we'll call it a flukosaurus, but 10 pounds is the mark for a doormat fluke. And personally, I haven't even hit that mark yet. So I can call my own fish sometimes flukosaurus, not very often, but make 2023 your season to get on the board with that 10 pound status. It is underway at this point. Of course, water temperatures are on the increase. So there are some flukes still out back in the salty bays and rivers, but now folks are starting to head out the inlets and look for some of those fish out along the structure. I would imagine that Flukasaurus, that doormat on the Sea Tiger was out there on the open expanses of Raritan Bay someplace. Raritan Bay was not a banner, 2022 wasn't banner season for fluke on the Raritan Bay. Let's hope that 2023 is, and we're all hoping for a solid season for fluke here in the New Jersey, Delaware Bay region. Moving a little bit farther to the south at Fisherman's Den in Belmar and Shark River, um, the folks there said Ryan and his buddy, they rented one of the rental boats there from the den, hit the Shark River, six pound, two ounce flatty that was caught on gulp. So yeah, you can still work your stretches of the Shark River. Uh, of course, the Manasquan as well. Plenty of flukes stacked up in patches from the Manasquan down through the upper stretches of Barnegat Bay, lower stretches of Barnegat Bay, all the way on out back uh, behind Beach Haven. In our weekly reports at thefisherman.com, field editor Ashley Viola relayed word from Liam at Creekside Outfitters in Waretown who advised working along those channel edges, of course, but he also mentioned that some of the fluke could be found on some of the local reef sites to the south. So perhaps that's uh, Little Egg, um, right? I'm hearing some really good stuff already. Uh, Captain Gary Dugan was telling us before that that, that reef is already loaded uh, with sea bass and the latest structure has only been in the last couple of years in the making. Uh, back up to, to Creekside though, I did hear from young Je uh, John Evans. He checked in at Creekside over the weekend, 4.65 pounder from Barnegat Bay. That was caught on a one ounce SNA, SNS filet bucktail and a five inch gulp grub attached. Farther to the south, think the Great Bay area. I stopped to see uh, Justin at Allen's Dock on the Bass River this week. He said some of the largest fish of the spring were being checked into the shop as of last week. Several in the 22 to 24 inch range. Live minnows, squid, gulp of course, even clam strips uh, were taking some fish in that Great Bay area. Justin shared this photo from the weekend. Sarah and young Jacob Clayton here got on the meat while fishing with husband, dad, John, a little advanced Father's Day celebration. I'm hoping to get back to Justin's place at Allen's Dock this coming week. I'm looking to find out about some noodling. Yeah, George was down in Kentucky this week doing some noodling for catfish. We're gonna check in and find out how he did. 
see about noodling in the Great Bay for something. I'd like to find uh, one of the, the old pineys down there reaching his hands into the muck, see what he brings out of there. Oyster cracker, perhaps? I don't know. Heading down into Atlantic County, the folks at Ray Scott's Dock in Margate said the flounder bite out back along the ICW was pretty solid last week, and they mentioned spearing as being the hot bait Although, of course, gulp and minnows as well. Light winds over the weekend past made for some really good drift conditions. Ralph Rubert here and buddies checked in this 5.75 pounder earlier this week at Ray Scott's. That's someplace in the backwaters behind Margate. We're getting similar reports coming in out of Cape May County as well. The folks at Avalon Hodgepodge pegged last week as producing some of the largest back bay summer flounder of the season thus far. They had several uh, fish over four pounds with live minnows, squid, and spearing getting the, getting the nod. Now everybody, of course, has their favorite fluke baits. The squid spearing combination goes way back in time. Live minnows, gulp, live spot where you can get them if you're looking for doormats, of course. And those fish bites, fight club grubs are getting more and more attention every year. If you got your fisherman subscription this past season during the boat show uh, season, you, you have them tucked away someplace in a bag, put them on your teaser rig or maybe on your bucktail. Now, if you're bringing those artificials, bring the colors, uh, I love white and chartreuse to start the day. Pay attention though to what the fish are spitting up when you catch them. If it's squid, then you have the pinks available. Or Travis Williams, he sent this shot of a thumb splitter in the belly of one of his fluke. Uh, a mantis shrimp in a 21 and a half inch fluke belly, a little bigger than grass shrimp where I might turn to shad darts, but some of those um, um, uh, gulp shrimp imitations get pretty darn big. It's nicknamed the thumb splitter. The mantis shrimp is also called a thumb splitter because those appendages, those mandibles or whatever you call them, they can inflict some damage to your fingers. So be careful if you get a live one. Do not go near those things. But a big shrimp imitation from Gulp, maybe Z-Man, not a bad idea to have some socked away on the boat someplace just in case they start spitting them up. It also could can't come in very handy this particular tournament weekend ahead. You've got the 27th annual JCAA Fluke Tournament. That's on Saturday uh, with way stations, I believe 10 or 11 of them from Jersey City all the way down to Cape May. You can still enter that statewide fluke tournament jcaa.org. Also, you've got the 25th annual Brutus Fluke Tournament out of Little Egg or out of Egg Harbor Township. That's out of the Egg Harbor Township Elks Lodge. That's this Saturday. If you want to get in on that, I believe the Friday captains meeting is going on at the lodge. Call Walt Gregory 609-513-6219 or Fred Vineyard 609-626 2675. That's this Saturday, June 17th. Now, weather wise, the NOAA Marine weather forecast out of Atlantic City midweek for the weekend ahead, it looks pretty good in terms of wind and waves. Most of the winds are a little bit out of the west, so in your, if you're in the back bay or right along the inshore waters, you're going to be in lee of the wind. Uh, we are looking at a few possibilities of some rain or even thunderstorms in the mix at times, but again, those marine conditions, marine weather conditions in terms of wa waves and wind, they do look good for the weekend ahead. And you know as well as I do that we need more rain. My lawn looks like uh, a bundle of hay at this point. But I'll tell you that the weather ahead, uh, if Noah's right, you know, flip a coin if you've got it, it does bode well for the final days of black sea bass this spring here at the Jersey Shore. June 19th in New Jersey is your last opportunity to score a few humpbacks on the local reefs and wrecks. The fisherman's Jenny Ackerman hit the grounds over the weekend with top shot Frankie Z as she shares in her new regular seg segment here in our weekly forecast. It's called Open Boat. Check it out. Bass is an excellent eating fish we have right here off the Jersey Shore. Any of the inshore lumps or rock piles are a great place to target them. 
It's also a good filler between the early striped bass season and just before our fluke season here. If you guys have an open weather window, definitely take advantage of it. Sea bass is almost over, so get out there when you can. We, of course, will hear more from Jenny, hopefully on a weekly basis, as she gets out and about throughout the Garden State in search of a bite. I spent a lot of time out of just offshore a little bit on Saturday, searching out a bite with friends, uh, that bluefin bite that never really materialized. We ran from the boot, Little Italy, all the way up to the farms, saw a bunch of mess, said lots of sargassum and, and lots of garbage in the water. We went back to the farms. Uh, you know, believe it or not, we didn't see the best signs until right before the closing bell on our day when we were heading back into port and we figured we'd check out the Manasquan Ridge. That's where we finally saw the dolphins. We saw some tuna chicks. So it might be worth it um, if you want to head out to the, the ridge at some point because it's looking like there, were some, there was some life. Uh, we weren't the only ones that didn't find the bluefin tuna in that JCSA tuna, uh, tournament over the weekend. Um, that's that bluefin fever. All the boats, I think there were a dozen boats in that contest and not a single bluefin weigh-in. It was equally tough over the weekend, although they had a little bit longer tournament at the Manasquan River Marlin and Tuna Club's Bluefin Open. A record number of boats in that tournament, but again, folks had trouble on the mid-range grounds finding that tuna bite. Uh, if you're tournament fishing, I would consider this um, as a word of uh, caution, perhaps. The crew of the Teddy B, they took home the first place trophy in the Bluefin Open um, and over $28,000 in that event. However, it was the second place crew of better attitude. They went all in, all the Calcuttas, all the way across the board. Second place, they took home a whopping $206,000. If you're in a tournament, if you're in it, get in it to win it. Go all the way, do it all. If you're investing as far as that goes, make sure you get in all the Calcuttas. Word I got was the, the bluefin, a lot of folks believe those bluefin that were inshore, mid-range, they may have head, headed deeper as we headed into the weekend. Where they are this weekend, nobody's nobody knows. That's the thing about fish, they have those darn tails. Um, but hopefully we'll see more on the mid-range grounds in the weekend ahead. From the Southern Canyons, we are starting to hear the reports of yellowfin tuna. Uh, the folks at Lewis Harbor Marina reported this week yellowfin at the Poor Man's Canyon. They had the photos to show it from the crew of Rippin' Lips Charters with Captain Jerry McLaughlin. Spreader bars of various colors did the trick. Now the midweek forecast from NOAA on the offshore grounds from the Hudson to the Baltimore has three to fives on Friday into Saturday but it does look like it's gonna start laying down on Sunday, three to fours, and uh, hopefully that lay down looks good for the entire week coming up. Maybe this will be the weekend that everything blows up on the tuna grounds. I did mention last week in the video fishing forecast that we were kinda on the tail end of that jumbo striper bite. Uh, there are still a few in the over category, catch and release some jumbo fish, but it's mostly the smaller school and slot fish in the mix now, especially if you work in those open beaches. Uh, guys who are working on a night bite, they're gonna find a few in that slot range. Uh, clams and bunker chunks uh, in the mix. Andy at Riptide Bait and Tackle let us know this week that Ellen or Eileen R. has been putting a lot of time in on the rock, in the surf, and I believe it's a Riptide Rotter that got her this first fish. So she was very proud of this and I'm sure we'll see her out there again uh, real soon. Soaking clams, but you might also wanna go to the sand crab, the mole crab route. Um, we're, as we get into summer, first week of summer next week, that's when those stripers are gonna be looking for mole crabs as well. Uh, swim shads and of course, night plugging. You guys know the routine. Early morning, late afternoon, especially during the week in the back bays when the boat traffic is down, uh, is also a good time to find some of those stripers around the structure, off the flats, uh, the sod banks of course as well. Real cool photo, I like this one that was shared by Gabriel Tackle and Brick this week. Just a reminder of how great it is to get back there with some of those smaller plugs. Um, look for those new Tsunami Tidal Pros. 
Um, the iPop on top. Of course, the Smack of Juniors. You can't go wrong with the NLBN swing, uh, swim shads. Uh, right along the uh, uh, along the structure, uh, I've been giving those NLBNs a shot, and it really is. You can still find those stripers in the back bays. Smaller fish, lighter tackle, a lot of throwbacks, and of course, if you have that bonus tag, you're still in the mix. Uh, I, I would remind you that I do believe that the New Jersey Marine Fisheries Council is meeting in an emergency session on Tuesday, June 20th. That's when they'll take the final vote on the ASMFC striped bass emergency, 28 to 31 inches. Uh, it's funny, everybody's criticizing New Jersey and, and thinking New Jersey's gonna go out of compliance. Uh, I don't know if you've heard anything, but the guys up in New England the for, for hire captains are ticked off. I'm hearing word of lawsuit out of Massachusetts and Connecticut. So this is a complete mess all the way around. But uh, again, we'll find out the uh, official word after Tuesday. I'll have that word for you next week here in the video fishing forecast. There are some weak fish around as well, more than I think most folks realize. I think because one fish bag limit, there's so few people targeting them. Richie here shared this photo, Tide Runner, with Jenny Ackerman, uh, a reminder Again, early mornings, late afternoons, areas of light traffic could produce perhaps the pink zooms, the finesse, the NLBNs, uh, uh, and especially those soft plastics around the bridge dock, uh, the bridge lights, the dock lights at night. You might find some good weak fishing. I used to love, I mean, there was a summer 15 years ago that I lived in Seabright, incoming tide on the Shrewsbury River throughout the summer. Pink zooms, pink finesse fish, just about on every cast. So hopefully we see one of those seasons. But again, one fish bag limit, nobody's out there targeting them. I think if more people actually focused on weak fish, you'd find a whole bunch more. Uh, some solid bluefish in the mix as well. You don't even have to target bluefish, they're gonna find your line, right? Daniel Gallagher shared this photo of Gary Kisselback Jr. enjoying bluefish madness in the back bays of Brigantine. Bluefish, jumbos, it's a good way for you to get on that dream boat leaderboard. You gotta be a subscriber to get in on it, but you do have your chance to win a brand new Steiger center console, a Yamaha outboard, a Minn Kota trolling motor package, plus the Hummingbird unit. Get in it, man. Now it's time for the Dream Boat update. It was a lean week for entries in the Dream Boat challenge, but what few entries lacked in numbers, they made up in quality. Michael Torinero of North Brantford, Connecticut, took the second place slot for the Porgy category with this 2.54 pounder. Jim Quinn of Ocean City, New Jersey, landed himself in second place for the Flatfish category with this 9.40 pound fluke. And Noel Yosquito of Bloomfield, New Jersey, rounded out this week's entry with his 10th place 2.28 pound sea robin. The leaderboard remains unchanged except for one point being extracted from the second and third place leaders. Bobby Civarelli is still leading the world with 18 points. Eddie Terrabile is holding down second place with 12 points, and Kyle Krause stands in third place with 11 points. The Dreamboat Fishing Challenge is the fisherman subscriber only multi species fishing competition with a chance to win a 21 foot Steiger Craft Center console powered by a Yamaha, along with many other great prizes. Visit thefisherman.com to subscribe and get all the details so you can be part of the action. Congrats to Doug Lewis, U.S. Army vet, vet who I, do, I, I believe he did two tours. He told me at least one in, in Iraq, perhaps in Syria, overseas his time protecting and defending this great nation of ours. Now, Doug won the Christopher Raguso Trophy in last Friday's Manhattan Cup while fishing aboard Captain Brian Rice's Jersey Devil Sport Fishing. That's the third consecutive Warrior Division wind win for our Jersey Devil crew. Only got the one fish though, 43.75 pounds. That worked, it worked for Doug. The Fisherman's Ma the Fisherman Magazine's Mike Caruso was there. He was fishing on Team Steiger and has this update on this incredible tournament. On Friday, June 9th, the Fisherman Magazine had the opportunity to fish in the Manhattan Cup, New York City's largest and arguably the most fun and only inshore saltwater fishing tournament 
in Manhattan. The veterans got a good one today. Team Let's go get away. another. It's a charity event aimed at helping veterans. And the reason why I become fishing here is to get some of our stress out and we're all in the same group come together. It's like a brotherhood. This is the biggest uh, year we've had to date. I believe it's 51 veterans, 47 boats. There's, there's people in line right now and their lives are going to be different. Veterans lives are going to be different at the end of this day because of the work that's put in, the generosity, Steiger, Yamaha, Ray Marine, just everyone, Liberty Landing and, and countless others. I'm a Vietnam veteran, went to Vietnam in 68, uh, was over there for seven months. I got two Purple Hearts and three Bronze Stars. Uh, we're having a good time. Uh, fishing, fishing definitely helps uh, ease the pain of being over there. The tournament is the vehicle, but that's not why we're here. We're here to get together. Doing something that people are passionate about. I mean, look at that skyline. And then to have the natural world so close to that really cosmopolitan, urban, hustle bustle. Whether it's firemen, police, military, our country is free today because of you, and we owe you everything. Thank you. We are fishing the Manhattan Cup alongside our veterans who put their lives on their lives to afford us the very freedoms we have today. Manhattan Cup winners! Really important to do. Whenever you see a vet, you need to thank them for them, their service. Welcome them home. These guys have been through a lot. Take them fishing. Hey, don't forget about the amazing freshwater action we have here in the Garden State. You can learn more as a subscriber, getting all full digital access to the weeklyfisherman.com digital magazine. But you'll get access to J.B. Casper's complete report. J.B. Casper has a freshwater fishing report, comprehensive, 38 weeks a year, all the way through the season. This week's digital edition, of course, it has Ellie Ildefonso on the cover with that 11th hour black sea bass reminder. This is the weekend. But J.B. Casper recently reported on Brittany Nito's impressive six pound largemouth caught and released somewhere in the wilds of South Jersey. I assume it was South Jersey because it was reported to us back from rock and fin rabble rouser Tom P, our offshore reporter. Man, do we have the best field of editors in the world, J.B., Anthony Califano, Tom P, Nick Konachewski, Eric Burnley in, in Delaware. And here's another one. My man, my friend, the great George Shower, the Pocono Outdoors guy. Hey, well, thanks, Jim. You know, the trout bite is still going strong here in Pennsylvania. A place like the Lehigh, you can still get into some great brown trout fishing, even some nice rainbows. But what's going really strong right now is that smallmouth bite. A lot of guys are leaving their trout rods behind. Uh, my trout guru, Eric Goodstall, he left them behind and got into some great smallmouth down in Northumberland County. So lots of great fishing guys get out and either get some trout or some smallmouth as well. Uh, but Craig Matcheson checked in from South Jersey. He was fishing his secret honey hole down there, and he was getting in some jumbo crappies guys a little curl tail uh, was getting it done both he and his son both got their pbs this past week on that crappie bite so be sure you get out and try some of that as well it's certainly going strong delaware river stripers are still in the mix guys lots of striper fishing we had joel and angelina Cassick out on a guided fishing trip getting themselves into a couple beautiful striper and i heard they even got in to a few really nice uh, smallmouth as well on the river. Now, talking about the Susquehanna River, there's a lot of buzz over here in Pennsylvania, guys. Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission announced there's a new state record for flathead catfish. Uh, Michael Worley of Fayetteville checked himself in with a 66.4 pound flathead. Boy, that is a beast. And that was on the Susquehanna River in Lancaster County. So lots of great fishing, guys. I know I'd sure love to, to tie into one of those things, but I I hope you do as well. Hey, don't forget to send me a picture of your PB this coming weekend. But from Pennsylvania, I'm George, your Pocono Outdoors guy. I took a run over to the Gambler in Point on Tuesday. Captain Bobby Bogan and soon to be Captain Chris Leto had NJ 101.5 radio host Bill Spadia stop by. To, he was talking um, small business and some of the problems we're facing in our local fishing communities. And then Tuesday night, I was off to Ridgefield Park 
for the regular meeting of the Hudson River Fishermen's Association, where I was honored to introduce guest speaker, my friend Cindy Ziff of Clean Ocean Action, who really gave a great talk about industrial offshore wind and the sheer magnitude of what's coming down the pike. Before you come up with your own opinion, I would encourage you to attend some of these meetings. But uh, I'll tell you what, if your fishing club would like a truly open and honest and analytical look at the industrial offshore wind uh, and what it really looks like, it's rather shocking in terms of its scope. We're talking like 3,200 turbines, millions of, of square acre, acres uh, where these things are gonna be located, thousands, tens of thousands of miles of undersea cables. But if you'd like Cindy to come out to speak to your club, drop me an email. First initial, last name, Jay Hutchinson at thefisherman.com. I'll put you in touch with Cindy and who knows, I'd love to come out and attend another meeting. I could watch this presentation uh, again, and I'd love to join you for it. There's um, these back bays, these rivers, these canals, where we keep our boats, where we, where, where we keep our homes, we keep our boats in the backyard. There's not a lot of water movement back there. So just keep that in mind. Um, if you're cleaning your fish right there at, at the dock and you're throwing those racks in, it's really not a good thing if you don't have a lot of water movement back there on those canals. Um, for example, I, I bring my racks home. Um, for the longest time, I'd throw the, the rack in the garbage and it would collect maggots and it would just stink. My buddy said, put them in your uh, stand-up freezer. And the, I was like, that's a good idea. So if I'm fishing on the weekend, what I do is I put the racks in a plastic bag, seal it up, put it in that stand-up freezer for a few days, and then I just remember right before garbage day to throw it out there. But again, rotting racks in lagoons and canals, not a good thing. Um, let's do this. I'm going to wish you the best of Father's Day weekend. I'll see you again next week. But ticket from my buddy Tim Smith here. Many anglers out there clean their catch when they get back to the dock. And often these racks are discarded over the side right next to the boat. Very convenient, but what you may not realize is that when these carcasses decompose, they will float back up to the surface after a day or two. And let me tell you, it's not pleasant. Don't be naive, there are not enough scavengers and crabs to eat the rotting remains. Please don't treat our waterways like sewers. What's your opinion? We'd like to know.